The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. And they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you. I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, one of the best parts of being your priest is that we enter and share your lives. We're at your weddings. We're at your baptisms. You invite us over for dinner and I eat your food. We're at your graduation parties. When you're sick, we're at your bedside. Oh, it's a glorious, it's a glorious vocation. It's amazing when you think about what happens here within the four walls of our parish. Imagine all the events that happen here. It's beautiful. And it's an honor and a privilege. But we also share with you your hard moments. Which is why I want to ask you, and I've been asking all the Masses that I've done this whole weekend, I'm asking you for your help. Tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday, our parish will be a house of tears. Two of our parish families are suffering mightily. And they need us. Two of our families have been devastated. Tomorrow, we have a funeral here for a young father, 29, along with his five-year-old son. There'll be two caskets right here. The next day, we're off for another funeral mass for a 22-year-old young man. And all our parish will be packed, as young funerals tend to be. And there will be wailing and crying in this place. 
And so I am asking for all of the members of the body of Christ here at our parish, and I want you to bring these two families of ours right here to the altar. I want you to muster all of your prayers, all of your rosaries, all of your intentions, and I want you to bring this family precisely here. Because it's precisely here which is the fulfillment now of this beautiful solemnity that we celebrate this weekend. This great solemnity of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. This beautiful Catholic teaching, which we maintained and hand on since the time of the apostles. And when we see, we penetrate the beautiful readings today, we begin to see the power of every single Mass. Because at every single time we come to the Holy Mass, a miracle unfolds. That when I say the words of consecration, This is my body. This is my blood. Our Lord comes. Every single Mass. And we see this fulfilled beautifully. Now for the first reading. We have the story of Moses. Moses in the book of Exodus. He's gathered with the people of God. And he erected an altar at the base of a mountain. And he built this altar in a very particular way. It said that there are 12 pillars which, on which the altar stands, which represents the 12 tribes of Israel, the chosen people. And so Moses, upon this altar representing the people of God, takes an animal and he slaughters the animal in a very graphic way. He takes that blood now in a bowl, and then he douses that altar, dripping with red blood, pours it upon it. And then he turns to the people, all gathered, witnessing this act, and then he pours blood upon them. What Moses did was that he was bringing all of the prayers of the people to that altar. When they would eventually build the temple in Jerusalem, the high priest would don on vestments similar to what Catholic priests wear, which is why as as priests we wear vestments and not a suit or a tie or jeans or a t-shirt. No, we wear vestments because we hearken back to the temple worship. And when the priest would put on and don on those vestments, on the chest plate of the priest would be 12 stones, beautifully decorated with different colors. And again, representing all the 12 tribes. And so when the priest would go to the altar, he would bring the entire sins of the people and take that animal. And he will attack our greatest enemy. He will attack our greatest source of pain. Because let me ask you, if if I were to ask you, what what is the cause of your greatest pain and suffering in your life? And I guarantee you, you will probably be mentioned something in relation to love, a relationship. If I were to ask you the opposite question, what is the cause of your greatest joy? And you'll probably answer very similarly. It has to deal with love. The birth of a child, getting married, seeing your children grow up. It's always in relationship to love. It's never, if you've ever noticed in our lives, our our greatest joy isn't a thing to be bought. It's nice to buy a new car, but pales in comparison to love. But the hardest part about love, as we all know, is suffering. 
especially when someone passes. All of the sacrifices in the Old Covenant was in preparation for which now in the second letter to the Hebrews, which we hear, the letter to the Hebrews, who writes in that second reading, when Christ now comes as high priest of all the good things that would come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, He entered into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats or calves, but with his own blood. You see, all of those animals, and it would have been millions of animals that were sacrificed up by this point, none of that can take away the sins of humanity. None of that can defeat death and sickness and suffering. None of that does. But it was in preparation as the author to the Hebrews beautifully articulates. He says, now, for if the blood of goats and bulls were in sprinkling of heifers ashes can sanctify those who are defiled, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself to cleanse our consciousness from dead works to worship the living God? The new covenant, oh, this word covenant, We heard it three times in the readings today. Three times. What the word covenant in in the biblical sense. The covenant is a creation of a family bond through a sacred oath. That's what covenant means. Which is why marriage is called a covenant. Because husband and wife, through those words and their vows that they share, creates a new bond, a family bond that's holy. Jesus forms a new covenant, and this time with his sacrifice. What do we offer those families tomorrow and Tuesday? What words can we give them to console them The only words we have as Christians is to give them Jesus Christ. That's it. We're going to now hold this family. We're going to carry them as St. Mary's parishioners, as members of the body of Christ. We're going to carry these two families of ours, aren't we? Amen? We're going to carry these families because we're not meant to walk this hard path alone. We need one another, especially when life hits us like that. We're not meant to walk this path by ourselves because we are the members of the body of Christ. And we're going to unite now all of our parishioners and we're going to carry these families and we're going to bring them to the altar today. Muster all of your prayers and your love and hold these families and bring them here. And then Jesus Christ will defeat death and suffering. This is our hope and the answer to the separation of death. Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. There is no other way.